Welcome back to the cold garage. Um, it's the end of January, it's pretty cold. We've got the propane heater going, so bear with us, please. Uh, today, we have a, a drill that we're gonna do that isn't necessarily uh, to focus on either form or the workout. It's to focus on shifting our attention and allowing, allowing us to check and see how much the body and the subconscious actually know. So what we'll be doing is sets of three. She'll do a set of three where she focuses very specifically on one point in her technique. And that's, she does the three reps paying specific attention to one specific part of the lift. And then we'll take a break and then back to it, we'll do a set of three where she focuses on nothing. She doesn't think about anything, she just acts. Pure action without thought. And what that does is that exposes how much her subconscious and her body know instinctively that we've trained into it. This is a great way to find out what you really know and what, what you can do without thinking and what you have to think to do. Um, this is a very valuable lesson for sports. A lot of times we get in our own way when, when we're thinking and trying to do a sport, uh, especially a maximal effort like this. If your form is correct, if you've worked very hard concentrating unceasingly in the gym and your form is correct, you can trust that form subconsciously to be there when you don't think anything. And in the meet, you can, you can get outside of yourself. You can get out of your own way. You can take your, your thoughts out of it and generate just, and run your body just from heart and habit. So what this does is we go back and forth by concentrating to try to improve a piece of uh, technique and then by just re relaxing the concentration and letting things flow. And then we can see what the subconscious knows and we, it will also expose what we need to work on, what we wanna make habit. And, and that's, that's the whole gist of it. it. It's not specifically to work on technique. It's not specifically to get a workout. It's to use this back and forth motion of thinking a lot and thinking very little back and forth to see what is the underlying current. What, we, what do we know by, by habit. What have we trained in is the, is the answer to that. What have we trained in and what still needs work? And that tells us what to work on. So we're gonna, we're gonna go through a, a deadlift routine this, in that fashion. All right, let's have three. The first three, I want you to uh, concentrate on the part of your form where you keep your, your weight into your heels the whole way. So I'm gonna watch your feet mostly to see if there's shift back and forth of your whole body weight and, and the weight, of course, of the bar. So get those feet planted firmly, get back on your heels and lift from behind your body. The bar's in front and, and we see it in front and we think we're lifting from the front, but you're really lifting from the muscles of the behind, your hips, your hamstrings, your lower back. Everything happens back behind you. So put your mind behind and let's concentrate very well on keeping the weight down. And I'll be checking your toes and your shoes to see if there's any shift. Do it at your own speed. Nice, good. Again. Good. Those are very, very good. All three of them are good. Relax, take a breather. On the next set that we concentrate on that, I want you to hold that up position a little longer. And I want you to feel, this is the sensation I want you to get. I want you to feel the weight pulling on your hands and that pull gets transferred up your arms to your shoulders. And that downward pull from the, from the weight goes up into the shoulders. And that downward pull on the shoulders goes where? That goes into your spine, down to your, oops, I knocked the mic down, down to your hips, down through your knees, 
down to your heels. So see if you can make the connection when you hold it there for a second. Just try to trace that pull from the bar. It goes up, but then it comes back down and out into the floor. Connect the bar with the floor. It goes a long way, but you can feel that. You can sense that. And we'll give you some time. That's after you do one not thinking. So the next one is just three not thinking. Yeah, you just want to flow. You want to... You don't want to necessarily... In Zen and the Art of Archery, they talk about the shot taking itself. You don't actually take the shot. You don't make it happen. The shot falls from the archer. The arrow falls from the bow. And so that's, that's the way you want to be here. You want to be empty of, of yourself and just let the deadlift happen on its own. Your body knows what to do. You've got solid form. I know we just moved to the, the sumo, and so it's, it's not as familiar as, as it would be if we'd done this for five years. But until we get to that point, it's good enough. Your technique is, is solid. So just trust it that this is part of the trust part. This is part of giving up this, this control freak and saying, okay, I, I did that in the first set. I controlled every little bit of what I was working on. Now I'm gonna give that up and I'm gonna let my body do this right. And hopefully it will do it right. You know, over time, it certainly will be more and more right. And you can do that whenever you're ready. Okay. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna be quiet now. Sometimes I speak during this and I forget that we're we're just letting you flow, so I'm not gonna correct anything. This is not the time for correction. This is the time to see what we have underneath the surface. What do we have? What can we count on? Okay, now sit down. Close your eyes for a minute, take a deep breath, and then feel what happened in your body. Go backwards in time and feel what that felt like in your body. Because it was good. It was solid, solid lifts. So feel that solidness, feel that, what we can count on. There wasn't any egregious errors. There wasn't anything that was like that I would have necessarily yelled out loud to you, hey, do this, pull your shoulders back, do that, you know. So it, that's pretty good when you don't have to concentrate on making yourself do the correct form. That lets you concentrate on giving it all you've got. What a freedom when you can trust your form. When you know your form is gonna be spot on you don't have to concentrate on, okay, you don't have to go through that checklist, you know, uh, take a deep breath and, you know, <laughs> you're free from all that. It happens automatically. And the reason you're free from it is because you've done it in the gym that way, step by step by step, little pieces of the technique all coming together. So now it's time to go back to that kind of thinking. The thinking where we control what happens, we do the lift. We master ourselves and the lift. Now it's time for you to take the reins again. And we said we were going to um, stay with the heel drive. That's the part of it you want to, that was going well. Stay with the heel drive, but then when you get to the top, see if you can trace that, that link to the ground. It doesn't go from your hands to the ground. Right? It goes from your hands up to your shoulders, down through your spine, down through your legs, into the ground, out through your heels. That's the real, that's where this force goes. So see if you can sense that for just maybe a thousand one, a really strong, so solid. Hold it at the top. I want you to hold it at the top and I don't want you to be moving around. I just want you to hold it and feel it pulling down into the ground, but not straight from the bar into the ground, like it's gonna pop your hands open. 
up through your hands, up into your shoulders, down through your spine, into your hips, into your legs, into your knees, into the heels, and then into the ground. So when you make the pull, so you have two things to concentrate on, but not at the same time. First, you, you stay back on your heels. And then when the pull is done, you concentrate on feeling where it, it, it hangs on you. Good. And you shouldn't see any movement. Nice and still. Good. One more time. Weight on heels. All right. Very good. So we can tell how how rooted you are into the ground when you make the pull by when it comes up if it has to make any adjustments to balance. If you're rooted, it just comes up and sits there. It just comes up and it sits there. It just comes up and it sits there. If it comes up and you have to move around with it a little bit, it helicopters a little bit, it kind of back and forth, that means the, the pull wasn't as clean as it could have been. It wasn't, so there, there's some, we're losing some power, or if we're doing some motion, we don't have to do. But that was, that was outstanding, and that was, that was very, very good. So memorize that feeling of uh, solidness, being locked into the ground. You know, you're locked into the ground, you're rooted. And maybe we'll try something uh, next time around with more concentrating with your feet. Um, that may or may not help, we'll find out. Uh, so now, take a deep breath, relax, enjoy the freedom that you have now, because you know, you're, you're not responsible now if something goes wrong. It's your subconscious. So I'm not gonna blame you if, if something crazy bad happens. I'm gonna blame the training. You're free from all that, this is not personal. This is sub-personal. Your persona is your consciousness. Your subconscious, we're getting into psychology now, but I'm not sure if that's part of your, your personality or not. I'm sure it plugs into it at some point, but I wanna separate out your responsibility to just letting the subconscious take the role here. Act like it's not you. You get out of the way and you just, if the subconscious does something bad, that's its fault, not your fault. Your job is to stand clear, be an observer, just, just let the thing happen. Don't be a doer. The body and the subconscious are the doer. Just let it come out, get out of the way of it. Sit down, close your eyes. Now assess how that felt. How's it feel now on your body? What got work, what didn't got work, what didn't get worked? Pay attention to what that feels like now and then remember what you did. Again, solid, nothing, nothing to speak, nothing, nothing remarkable, okay? The idea here is to give up to that form, give up to what you know. And then now we're gonna go back, and I, let's try something like this. Mark, look at my shoe. Can you tell when, when, I'm, when I have the weight on the inside of my foot and the outside of my foot? Yes. You can see that motion in my shoe, right? Mm -hmm. So let's, um, let's roll a little bit of the weight to the outside of the legs. So not only pushing down, that's what's gonna help us lift the weight, but what m might make us more solid and get us screwed into the ground a little better is a little bit of force that we send outward. Now not a lot, because that's not gonna help us lift, and we don't wanna waste you know, pushing out real hard uh, because we need, to, we need those legs to be driving down to, to move the weight up. But what I noticed was there was a little bit of, of motion. So when you, you kept your weight back well, 
but there was a little side-to-side -side motion in the ankle. And perhaps that could be something we could strengthen with the ankles, but I don't think that's what it was. I think it's just, we haven't, we haven't really worked on locking into the ground. And so the ankle joint itself is a potential place to lose power. So we want that ankle joint locked in. And one way to get it locked is to kind of press it to the outside so it can't really go any further and then not rock it back in. So what, look at my foot for a second. And if I press it out like that and I make the lift, you can see if it, if it rolls back in a little right. bit. And if it rolls back in a little bit, that means my knee rolled back in a little bit, right? Or my tibia, right? Something, something wasn't locked in. And so we want a lot of rigidity in the lower body now. And we're gonna start from the bottom up. So let's get some, a little bit, don't overdo it. Actually. So, so concentrate on your connection to the floor with your feet. Put a little bit of pressure out and then almost all the force goes down. Keep the pressure out, yeah. Yeah. That's generally it. Just see if that works for you, if that helps you feel solid. You feel solid down low at the very bottom. I like that. You do? Yeah. Okay. Let's pursue it a little ways. So Can you tell the, the difference in my shoes? Yeah. I oh, yeah. I felt different. Yeah, I certainly could. Um, let's pursue that a little bit. Now, there's overdoing it, and there's, you know, th there, everything has a sweet spot, right? I didn't hear my knee crack. I have problems with this knee. I didn't hear it crack. That's good. Maybe that little outward tension, you know, maybe the knees, and I haven't washed the knees, but they, they don't seem to wobble like they sometimes do with the squat, but I don't see that. No, but they don't feel like they're wobbling. I had that microfracture surgery and I hear it pop a lot. Yeah. And um, I didn't hear it pop that time. You can feel it too? Yeah. Yeah. But it didn't make the cracking. Well, that may, it may be good for more than one reason then. Um, it's worth pursuing for us though, to see if it, if it is useful, if it's helpful. And sometimes the actual physical um, the, 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 what we see on the outside and what we the, the physical ramifications aren't as important as the mental ramifications you know I, I, had a, I had a trainee one time that tied his shoelaces extra super tight he was breaking shoelaces sometimes pulling them so tight and I said well, you know, why do you and he would do it between every lift and he's benching and, and I'm like why do you tie your shoelaces so tight and he says, because it makes me think about staying tighter. And so do tight shoelaces really have an external ramification on the bench press? No, they're definitely tighter. We could measure how tight his shoes are. Yeah, his shoes are definitely tighter and that's a physical measurable thing that changes. But does that have any real impact on the bench? Probably not, but for him, he turned that out, outside physical thing that he was doing into an internal image and feeling that made made him tighter which does have bearing on the bench press when your upper body gets tighter and you hold yeah hold your line tighter and everything's tighter and so I'm not so sure if you know pushing out has any real help with as wide of a sumo as you are it might though because of the angle. I haven't really looked at the angles from the front from a distance with you yet. You know, we're still working on the sumo thing. So it, it might, you might have to push down and out and that might make sense. But for now, we're just talking about the base. We're just talking about grabbing and rooting and screwing into the floor and, and, and holding the floor with our feet and creating a really solid platform from which to execute the lift. You know, it really does start there. So let this flow. You can, you can uh, use that uh, little press out that we're, we're working on, but don't think about it, just do it and 
and leave it and then do the lift and let's see what let's see what transpires let's see what happens yeah. came full uh, go ahead keep going mm -hmm. Very good. I was gonna, I was gonna do a little coach in there in between. I forgot that I'm not supposed to. I'm not supposed to. So on that first one, you felt the, the forward, backward. Okay. So that's what came out. But then the next two. Uh, it was hard not to think about it after I felt myself do it. You probably corrected it, right? It's okay. So, but we know we can't trust it yet. We know that's one place that we still have to do more repetitive forcing the issue with our mind, making ourselves not have any forward and back lean at the end. Uh, no bobble at the top of the, of the rep. We know that now, we saw that. And we can, we'll put that in the data bank, like if you were keeping notes today, which eventually we will, um, when we're not recording, you know. We'll, uh, we'll make notes about what, what we think we want to work on next. Maybe an overview of some of the things. I haven't even watched your shoulders once yet. You know, haven't watched your hip height yet. Nothing. We're still, we're going to start at the bottom today at least. We'll see how far we get. You know, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll investigate those things later at a later date. Right now, we're making progress with this, I hope. I guess, I guess I should ask, are you feeling more solid on the floor? Yes, I am. Then, then I think we're, we're on the right track with something that will improve. And, um, you know, this, this translates back to when I benched or when I teach any technique on the bench. It's, it's stability matters a great deal. So you can be loose. I see some really strong lifters that are setting records today that are very loose. But that just means they have to make up for that looseness with even more strength. So what they're doing is they're strong guys. They don't have, they're, they're kind of, their, their strong point is their physical strength. Their weak point might be their technique. But instead of trying to balance out them they're just sticking with their strong point. I, I, I'm strong and I'm gonna keep getting stronger. I'm gonna keep getting stronger. And they still have this, this weak spot that they just don't pay any attention to. So they may set records and they may continue to hit personal records, but they won't be at their personal best because their personal best by definition would be to have their strength maximally developed and their technique maximally developed. And putting those together would, would give them their maximum potential. So they're maximizing one part of their potential and they're sort of ignoring another part. So stability is, is, is you know, on the bench press, I used to spend a lot of time working on getting stable on the bench before I worried about building my strength. And there's no reason you can't do both. You can build your strength and your stability. So, so why not do it? So now we're back to focusing on a little bit of outward pressure to the, to the feet. Okay. And weight way back on the heels. Let's make three smooth pulls with that. And then at the end, I do want you to hold steady for at least a thousand one count. So you set your feet, and you don't think about them again. You drive with the heels, and then at the end, you focus on holding steady. So there are three sequential things. Now, I think that's helped a lot on your feet. Steady. Feel that last little bobble? <laughs> okay. That's okay. That last little bobble, is so high in the motion that it's not gonna cost you a lift at that point, because you've already got it up. The question is where'd the bobble come from? And was it there, was there something off 
when it was at your sticking point, where it was either make it or break it. So did it show up just at the end, or was it possibly somewhere? Yeah, and, and, and we won't know, so we don't want to see it ever. You know, the only way to know is just to never have it in there. Um, just this commitment and attitude towards ultra tightness, ultra stiffness, ultra solid lifting um, pays off. Especially when you're doing, well, it pays off in a maximal attempt because you're at your limit and any little thing could stop you. Because if you're at your limit, you need everything you've got to make it. Your real limit. If you're under your limit, then maybe you can make a few little bobbles and a few little mistakes and still make it. But if you're at your absolute max, it matters. And it also matters, these little bobbles, because they add up during set after set after set. And in a long, hard workout, they, they put at risk the last couple reps of the last couple sets. There's a fatigue built up. And if you'd stayed cleaner, you'd, you'd have a little bit more less left over. So when you're ready, let's just make some super smooth, graceful pulls coming from somewhere that's invisible, not from something you're thinking about. These ones aren't thinking ones, right? Excuse me? Um, no thinking on these ones. No thinking, no correct. Thinking. This is coming from somewhere you can't see. It comes out of you. You don't, you don't make it happen. It, it happens for you. Sit down and feel what you know. Just You don't have to think of this in terms of specific things. Just an overall feeling of how that went. You can self-regulate, you can self-assess by asking yourself, did it feel easy or did it feel hard? Did it move up smoothly or did it drag? The faster and smoother it moves, probably the, the better your technique. The lighter it sensed, it's, it, it senses to, it, it's sensed by you, the better your technique. So you don't have to think back and say, did I keep my weight back on my hips, on my heels? Did I, did I start with my hips? Did I pull with my hips? You don't have to think any of that. You just have to feel what feels more and more right. More and more right will give us a lift that is smoother, faster with the, with the sub-maximal weight and it will it will feel lighter and we set out today to do a little bit of um, form work concentrating on a little pieces of the technique but that wasn't the major issue today the major issue was to be able to concentrate on doing something like that perfecting a piece of the form and then we, we do another set where we see what we've mastered so far. We don't think about anything. We just let things happen. Uh, we let the, the, the lift flow from us, and we see what we've got. And by going back and forth like this, uh, one thing, it teaches you what you have. It, you, you see what is automatic and what isn't. But also, it teaches you to be able to control your focus bring it down to one little thing and then to open it up so wide that you're not thinking about anything thinking about everything but nothing um, it's, it's a valuable tool for sports because sometimes if we get too focused on one thing it's hard to do the whole skill Yogi Berra used to say you can't think and hit at the same time and that's kind of what he meant here. If you're thinking about uh, shifting my weight from the back foot and, and, and bringing my hips through and twisting my shoulders and cocking my wrist, you can't think about that with the ball going 90 miles an hour at you. 
It has to happen automatically. It has to come from somewhere that you don't have to think about. So if you, if you get into a competition and you don't think at all, you had better have done some good training because whatever your training is, is gonna come out. And if you haven't done the hard work where we were focusing on individual little tiny things and trying to perfect them and master them, then when you get into to competition and you don't think, all kinds of crummy things are gonna happen. So to be able to do this, to be able to get to the point as an athlete or competitor where you can trust your training and let go and let things happen, you have got to have done some really, really focused, concentrated, controlled training. And that's what we did today. We went back and forth. And um, it, it's, a, it's a super drill to do. It's, it's enjoyable. Uh, you can learn a lot about your technique. And um, uh, I, I, think, I think it's a lot of fun to just practice letting go. We don't do that enough. So there you have it. I hope you enjoy it, and I hope you give it a shot at least. Thanks.